So here are some guidelines when it comes to values. So right now we have our light coming from the left side. So think of this as your light. I'm gonna draw a sphere. When you first see an item, I want you to think of two simple values. One is the light mass, the area that's in light. The other is the shadow mass, the area that's in dark, okay? Just two simple values. Now, obviously, when you squint, you can see those values very easily. There's a line that kind of comes down here, goes this way, and then comes down to my thumb, okay? Everything to the right of that line is shadow mass. Everything to the left of that line is light mass. Even in the light mass, you'll notice these shadows here, or I don't even want to call them shadows, these darker areas here, these areas are still in the light mass. So when you, you have to really squint and say, okay, this whole area is light mass, this whole area is shadow mass. However, in the light mass, you're going to have areas that are lighter, and in the shadow mass, you're going to have areas that are darker. So if this is your shadow mass here, like the cheek, then this is darker. Okay, so you're going to have things that go darker in the shadow mass, things that go lighter in the light mass. But just make sure you clarify that going from this line down the nose to here, everything to the right is shadow mass, everything to the light uh, to the left is light mass. Is that clear? Okay. How does that apply to a sphere? When you're looking at uh, two simple values, we want to kind of break them up this way. So I'm going to do a kind of semicircle that goes across. Okay. This whole area will be light mass, this whole area will be shadow mass. When I shade, I'm gonna keep my pencil or my finger back on the pencil and I want you to kind of practice this motion. And when you shade, you'll see me keep the pencil on the paper and move it back and forth. So I'm holding the pencil here, let me just slide that over, okay? And I'm just moving this way, this way, this way, this way. Think of a teeter-totter. Every once in a while, you'll see me rotate the pencil, okay? And when you can do it this way, you're gonna get a really nice value drawing, okay? Now, sometimes I'll have to rotate the paper to get right on that edge. I don't wanna go outside of my line. I wanna kinda of stay in that line uh, because if I go outside of it, then it's more that I have to erase later on. So that's how you shade. Now, I'm gonna show you the shading process on the drawing, so I don't wanna spend too much time here, but I want you to think about all this being shadow mass like i mentioned to you before so all this would have been shaded okay so you got light mass shadow mass so now that we have light mass remember i told you there are areas within the light mass that get lighter okay areas that are closest to that light which is for us coming from the left side uh you'll have a little area right here that's going to be your highlight so in order to have this be your highlight know that you have to have a little bit of value even in your light mass, which is what I was showing you in the head a few minutes ago, okay? So you have to have a little bit of value here. Now you won't really see the ring here, that'll just be a subtle transition, but I just wanted to clarify that if you have a highlight, which is gonna be the value of our paper, the lightest part closest to the light, then the light mass has to have some value in it. Now let's move on to the shadow mass. So this whole area is shadow mass, as I mentioned before. Now, what happens is as the sphere turns away from the light, the furthest it reaches before it curves back under, that's called a coarse shadow. So you'll notice there'll be a ring that goes around this that's a little darker. Now, mine is gonna curve because it's a sphere, but these principles apply to anything that you're looking at, okay? Okay, that's gonna be called the coarse shadow. It's the furthest away from the light. Now remember this light is casting a shadow onto the table. So imagine this light is hitting the sphere and casting a light on the table. So if this is our table, the cast shadow will go like this. It'll come around and depending on how high that light is, it'll go like this and cast a shadow. Okay, now we're gonna shade that. Now there's one more area in here that's not drawn yet. So I'm gonna make my shadow mass a little darker. There's a little part right here, okay? Kind of goes around the side and goes like that. I'm gonna shade everything other than that little part. This area right here, which is still part of the shadow mass, so it still has value in it, 
That's called a reflected light. So to just review what we just spoke about, okay? Over here, these areas that are the lightest, those are gonna be your highlights. This area over here, this is gonna be your light mass. So we see that right there. So we got highlight light mass. Remember we talked about this all being the light mass and this all being the shadow mass, okay? All right, so now in the shadow mass, which are all of these values right here, we have a core shadow, the area darkest, see this area here, right there, let's see it in here, all the way coming to here, the area furthest from the light, which are those darkest areas, are your core shadows, okay? You've got shadow mass, which we already spoke about, so this whole area on the right side, this is all shadow mass, okay? Within the shadow mass, you're gonna see some areas that get lighter. Do you see right there on the cheek and right there on the temple where it's getting lighter? That's because the light from the table is bouncing back into the head and making it lighter on that side. That's why they call it a reflected light. So that's the reflected light, it's a bounce back light. So in this case, the light is coming down onto the table and bouncing back into the bottom of that sphere. Just think about this being a white ball, like a white sphere, um, like you're playing pool, the white, you know, the white sphere that you hit. Uh, and then this is like, let's say a red, you have a red pool table, okay? Now the red is gonna bounce back into the bottom of that white, does that make sense? So it can be a reflected light or it can be a reflected color if you're working in color, but for our sake, it's gonna be reflected light. And then uh, if I put this down, you see the shadow right there on the table? That's the cast shadow. Okay, so the light is hitting this head and casting a shadow. So we covered all these values in the head. Now let's see how that applies to our still life. Make sure your pencil is sharp. We're going to start shading. And I'm going to erase some of the construction lines, some of the things I don't need. Now I'm erasing that um, line that I drew for reference. I'm erasing some of this. Some of the things that I think will not get hidden. I want to have a focal point. Uh, for me, my focal point will be my cup because it's in the center, it's the tall, like, not the tallest, but it's the highest on my paper. So I start with my focal point and then I work to the least important. That's how I do it. So I'll start with this one, then I'll go to this one, then I'll go to this one, okay? Now again, I'm going to start shading this and my goal is to get rid of the outlines. And I'm going to shade it right up to the value of that line and get rid of it. Okay, now on this area here, you'll notice that the apple is actually darker than the cup. So I wanna make sure I don't put too much value in the cup. It's not white, the cup's not white, um, but I wanna make sure that when I get to the apple, that the apple gets darker than the cup. And I'm about a 45 degree angle. So if you think about this being the paper, I'm about a 45 degree angle. Now, if, you, if this is the paper, so the paper's like this, I'm turning it, okay? You don't wanna go too flat with your pencil and shade like that, because if you go too flat, it's gonna look really bumpy. So make sure you lift up just a little bit. Obviously you don't wanna be here, okay? Uh, about a 45 degree angle. And like I said before, it doesn't hurt to practice, so just practice your shading. Uh, you'll also notice that in this video, I don't smudge my drawing. Uh, some of you guys take your finger and you smudge it. My advice would be not to smudge. What I find is all this cross hatching. You see how my pencil's moving this way, then moving this way, and then moving this way. All of this creates a smooth effect in the end. I want to show that the cup is darker than the handle, so I'm just going over the area more. It's not about pressing harder. That's not what this is about. So I have the pencil kind of locked into my palm here. And what I'm doing is I'm drawing with uh, almost like I'm pointing. Now I write like this, okay? So I don't write like I'm drawing uh, right now, but I'm kind of using my pointer finger, middle finger, and my uh, thumb to kind of guide that. And I'm using my arm. So I'm drawing more um, like this. So I'm not drawing with just the wrist. I'm drawing with my arm, okay? So just want you guys to notice that. I'm 
just lifting out a little bit of the lip. Okay, and then just try to dust that off. Okay, I'm gonna go in here and I wanna push this darker, so I'm actually gonna outline it darker. The darker the line, the darker the value. And then I'm gonna go darker on the inside to match that line. And if you go too dark, you can always erase, draw with your eraser. So now I'm erasing. Okay, so I'm gonna use this eraser. If I leave this the way it is, I'll have a line in the background and I don't really want that. So sometimes what I'll do is a little bit of value in my background. Now this takes practice. It's basically you're holding it here it's loose enough to move, but not loose enough to fall. Okay, so you're just kind of moving it back and forth and you're moving at your with your arm and not your wrist. So my wrist is locked and I'm moving like this, okay? So that one you may have to practice. And the whole goal is to not create a halo. What I mean by halo is if I have a circle and I have a tabletop and I'm doing a background, don't just do that, okay? You want it to fade out into the background, okay? So that's what I'm trying to do here. But keep in mind what you work on. So like if you have, like right now, I can feel something's underneath my paper. And if I shade that, my drawing is gonna pick up on whatever's underneath that paper. Or if you're choosing a drawing paper that has some indents on it from a previous drawing where you drew too hard on, then we're gonna see that in this drawing, especially in the shading process. So um, just keep in mind what you decide to draw on is going to affect how your shading goes. So I'm gonna go here and contrast my values. So I have my background lighter right there and I have my cup darker. So even though I'm working on the cup, I'm also looking at the negative space at the same time. I'm just gonna start shading very similar to how you saw me shading the cup. Now, one of the things I wanna do for this before I get too far into it is remember the six values we went over, the light mass, shadow mass, all those values we went over. What I'm doing when I look at this apple is I'm squinting to try to find where the light mass is, where the shadow mass is. Sometimes what I'll even do is take a photo, and again, I'm not saying to work from the photo. I'm just saying these are tools that you can reference. So I take a photo of my still life, and I turn that photo black and white, okay? You should be working from life, so you should not even have a photo in front of you. You should have your still life in front of you. You can use that as a reference just to check your value and see, and I still do that today, I, I take a photo, and I look at it in black and white, and then I'll look at my drawing. If it's in color, I'll turn my drawing in black and white or my painting, and I'll compare the values. So you can check your structure that way, and you can check your value that way. Uh, but what a photo does is that your eye compensates for any perspective issues. With a camera, you have typically one lens that you're looking at, and so everything that you look at flattens out a little bit more. 
uh, but the advantage is that you're able to see some of your mistakes that way. And so a lot of times when I'm trying to just check um, to see if I had a proportion right or um, to see if I had a value right or a color or anything like that, I'll take a picture and look at it black and white or look at it in color and kind of compare because that photo is going to flatten it out. And for that same very reason um, is why we tell you don't work from a photo. And I'm squinting at my apple to kind of see how dark it is compared to the cup. When you see me shade, I'll never go pitch black. And especially with graphite, this is graphite. Um, some people call it a pencil, some people call it graphite. But especially with graphite, you'll never see me go super dark, okay? Now, if I were to shade this in, I would never go like this and go solid. What that does is causes your drawing to be very shiny in that spot, and it also creates a black hole. So no matter whatever you look at, you're always gonna look at this dark part. So you wanna establish your value scale. You wanna make sure that you're not going too dark but you also wanna make sure that you're not staying too light on accident because you're scared to go dark. What's gonna make you, you is showing us that you're able to kind of step outside of your comfort zone and be willing to work hard and be willing to practice and know that you're always gonna be growing. All you're seeing me doing is cross contour and I wanna just take a second to kind of explain that. I'm gonna go back to this drawing here. Now, remember when I gave you this really rough sketch of the highlight, light mask, core shadow, all of these things you saw, um, there's something that I want you to understand and that is cross contour. And if you think about a beach ball that ball is going to be straight in the middle and it's going to kind of wrap around like this, you know? Okay. And if you have a cylinder and you go down like a toilet paper roll, that cross contour is going to wrap this way. And so what you're seeing me do in this apple is pick up on the cross contour that already exists. And that cross contour is shown by color. Okay. So you're seeing all the greens and the yellows and the reds. Uh, so what you saw me do first was give myself a value, okay? So it's like a blanket. I laid down a blanket of value and I went a little darker in the area that I knew was considered shadow mass and I left it a little lighter in the area that I knew was considered light mass, okay? And now what you're seeing me do, instead of the cross hatching that I did before, is I'm doing cross contour. So now I'm kind of going up and down, but you're seeing me angle it like that beach ball. Now, when you do that, you're accomplishing two things. One is you're getting those, uh, you know, the value changes that are actually there on the apple. So I'm looking at the apple and looking at, you know, the darker reds here and I'm getting the color. So it's, it's starting to look more like an apple. The other thing it's doing is it's making it look round because I'm curving my lines to imitate that cross contour as it wraps around, okay? Um, you can do the same thing on this one and kind of go across. So just an example, you can, take this, not cross hatching, but cross contour, where I'm pulling it like a smiley face across. And that kind of goes on top of your cross contour, okay? So it's a combination of both. And when you can see both, then it's like, oh, that starts to look three-dimensional. Do you see that, the difference between that and this, okay? You gotta draw the foundation and then get the detail. And so that's what we call working general to specific. And we're just gonna erase out the highlight. Just kind of scrub, find out where the highlight is and dig it out. And what's even cool about these erasers or any eraser really, is you can draw with it. So if you had accidentally gone too dark, draw as if you were using it like a pencil, but now it's reversed, so it's called subtractive. Juxtapose your values. So here you have your apple and you have your background, which is your cast shadow. You have to look to see which one's darker. 
you, you can't have them the same. So for this case, because my apple looks darker to me, I'm gonna actually darken the apple and make sure my cast shadow doesn't go as dark as the apple. That just shows me that I didn't make my apple dark enough, okay? Then continue shading. Just make sure that the value here is not the same as the apple. So if it starts to get too dark and you're seeing it disappear into the apple, then you need to make the apple darker. If the apple was on a black paper, then guess what? My cast shadow would be darker than the apple. So think about what value of the object you're using compared to what value is on your tabletop. What happens is I do one thing and I'm happy with it and then I go to another thing and I get better. So even in one drawing, I can see myself getting better. And it's not always like that. I just wanna clarify that. And I think what you'll have to remember to do is go back to the first thing and make that just as strong as the second and the third. So I'll just kind of shade this area in and then move on to the shell. That'll give us a little bit more context of the value of the shell. You can always start light. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shade. And the reason why I have to do something here, like I mentioned, if I shade that, it's kind of weird to not have anything here. Uh, plus I have a horizon line, which I need to get rid of. Remember, it's a line that I need to get rid of. So I'm gonna stay light. If I wanted to, I could always go darker and make it darker than the handle, but I'm gonna keep it a little bit more on the lighter side. I can also get rid of this top line by using the background as well. Again, dark against light, light against dark. So remember, cup is dark, background is light. It's kind of like a game. Cup is light, background is dark. Where they meet needs to be kind of a seamless transition. So let's move on to the shell. Now the shell is pretty light compared to the other objects. I'm squinting and I want the shell to kind of pop out. Like I said, when you feel intimidated, you're not gonna have the same still lifes as me, uh, still life items as me. You may feel like, where do I start? Just start <laughs> and, and edit as you go. Nobody's perfect. Um, so start somewhere, just start shading and let your uh, mind really look at what it is you see. I am consistently looking at my still life. It's literally look, draw a little bit, look, draw a little bit, look, draw a little bit, look, draw a little bit. So you can't, like I said, you can't see me doing that, but that's what I'm doing. And I'm just keeping my pencil on the paper and I'm moving it around. When I move this out of the way, my fingers are clean and I'm gonna navigate in between because this graphite will smudge if I just go like this and knock everything off. So I'm gonna navigate my finger one at a time and then I'll just kind of get it off. So I'm kind of pushing it out of the way in between my objects and I'm just like pushing it off my fingers. So be careful not to just like do that. If you have an old paintbrush, or um, you know, a paintbrush you're not using, you can easily take a paintbrush, I'm just grabbing this one, okay, and you can just knock it off. So if you have a paintbrush that's dry, no paint, no water, just knock it off and that, that makes life a lot easier. Um, they also sell brushes for that, um, but I didn't have one of those brushes until recently, so it's, I'm not saying to go buy one, I'm just saying this prevents the oil in your hand from um, getting onto the paper. You can use that to knock off some of this and you can actually go over the graphite and it's okay. Um, otherwise you're using your finger and you're just trying to navigate around the graphite so that you don't smudge it everywhere. If you look at your hand and there's all this pencil here, that means that if this is the paper, you're resting your hand and you're moving it around and you're actually smudging the drawing 
while you work on it and that's not what you want. So I feel like these two objects are pretty solid and this one was like an afterthought even though this was my first one. So the last thing I'm gonna do is go in and get in some of the details that I see in the cup. Okay, so now let's get in some of the highlights that we see on here. You can see me um, pushing this darker in certain areas. Now again, my eraser is pretty fat, so it's erasing out a lot more than I wanted. So what I do is I go back in with my pencil and I fill in the area that I didn't want erased. And then just make sure you're not pinching the edge also. You also have to balance your value. So I'll go a little darker here and it creates these little pockets of focus. So what you do, when you look at this, you're bouncing from here to there to there. There's little areas that kind of seem, and because I'm high contrasting, so I'm contrasting this to this, this to this, this to that, you know, this whole thing is juxtaposing each other, which is contrasting. So I'm dark on the inside, light on the outside, light on the inside, dark on the outside, and that happens all around the whole drawing. So uh, this would be a great example of a nice finished still life in graphite that's giving you all the value ranges, little bit of not only cross hatching, but cross contour to look three dimensional. Um, again, smudging is up to you. I didn't smudge anything here. The only place I would smudge if I was going to would be to transition my background to my paper. And, and that even is a very light transition, okay? Mm -hmm. 